Hello hockey fans, Chris Terrell here with RollerPros.com to bring you my DFS NHL Jaeger Bomb Shots of the Night. So I'm going to start off on the matchups tab. Uh, a couple teams that I'm looking at, we've got six and a half totals in the Minnesota at New York game, Buffalo at Tampa, as well as San Jose in LA. And then we've got uh, six total, um, Vegas total in Ottawa, Columbus, Calgary at Pittsburgh, Vancouver at Philly. So the first place I'm really turning at tonight, uh, what I'm looking at on the sheet here is Tampa Bay is at home to Buffalo, who's playing on a back-to-back. -back. Um, they did come away with a 5-2 win in Florida last night, but before that they had lost 9 of their last 10, uh, given up somewhere around 3.5 goals per game. So I'm definitely looking at Tampa Bay at home, even though they will be likely without uh, Steven Stamkos tonight. They're projected for 4.6 goals. Prob that's probably a little bit too high, probably somewhere around 4.3 um, is more like it. They're number one offense in hockey, number one at home. Buffalo hasn't been too bad on the road defensively, um, but again, lately that uh, hasn't been the case as much. A lot of that, uh, you know, losing 9 of 10, only three, four of those games were on the road. So they definitely struggled at home. A little bit better on the road, but I still like uh, the fact that they're getting, uh, Tampa Bay is getting to face them tonight while they're kind of a little bit on a down streak here. I do like the Islanders. I think it's going to be a GPP pivot. Uh, there's a five and a half total in this game. Uh, the Islanders are going up against Anaheim. Uh, normally, Anaheim we think of as a strong defensive team. They're actually 13th in overall defense so far this season, or sorry, 19th in overall defense. So they've kind of slipped down a little bit, uh, mainly because they have lost eight of their last nine games. And in those losses, they've given up three, four, six, four, five, 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 and six. So they're giving up a ton of goals lately. So New York definitely, uh, you know, they're not going to be a core team for me in terms of cash games. Maybe looking at Barzal, talked about the individual players here coming up. But uh, definitely a team that I'm going to be targeting for GPPs tonight um, in a great spot against Anaheim, who's really, really, really struggling defensively. I like Columbus tonight. I uh, haven't been on Columbus a whole bunch this year. They're one of the highest projected scoring teams tonight. One minus 170, 67 favorites, 3.8 goals in the projection. A lot of that has to do with Ottawa, who is uh, 17th in overall defense, but they struggle a little bit more on the road. They're 23rd in road defense, so definitely looking at that. And then the Rangers, I talked about uh, that. Minnesota struggles on the road, uh, 25th road defense versus New York. has actually been pretty good top 10 home def or home offense this year, so that's a good spot for them too. So those are kind of my core teams. So we're just going to jump in. We're going to look at uh, some individual players, a couple at each position that I'm concentrating on. Um, we'll start off at the goalie position here. We'll start off at the top. Vasilevsky talked about the, the matchup with Buffalo. They're minus 250 favorites. He's the most expensive goalie on DraftKings, second most expensive on FanDuel. Um, he struggled to start the season. He was very up and down. Even over the last 10 games, he's only got a 903 save percentage. Um, but he is an elite goalie. He's in a really good spot tonight. And over his last two games, he's faced... Uh, 71 shots, he's only allowed four goals in that time, so he's actually been a heck of a lot better here lately, so I'm willing to pay up for him tonight uh, against Buffalo in this strong home matchup. Carter Hart, I like as well for the Flyers, a little bit of a Flyers homer here, but they are playing a struggling Vancouver team, so I'm not uh, I'm not too, too concerned there, and Hart has been a lot better himself lately. Kind of the same story, he's got a 902 save percentage over his last 10 games, um, pretty big sample size there for him seeing as he and Elliot they kind of they've been kind of going back and forth but he's allowed two or fewer goals in three of his last four sorry four of his last five starts so definitely looking at that against like I said a struggling Vancouver team that's playing across country right now um, so those are my two main ones GPP I'm, I'm looking close at Corpus Allo home's nice home favorite minus 167 against Ottawa and then Lundqvist who is it's almost a pick em in that game but I do like the Rangers at home versus Minnesota who has struggled quite a bit on the road into the center position I uh, talked about Tampa. I'm leaning on Brayton Point tonight. He's kind of that next tier down. A lot of these top guys here, Sagan, Malkin, uh, Crosby's out. Uh, Stamkos likely going to be out. We've got Eichel, Pedersen, Carlson. All of them don't really have that great of matchups. The best matchup there, I guess, would be Eichel um, going up against Tampa, but I like Vasilevsky. I, I'm not really on that Buffalo offense against Tampa. Um, Tampa's defensive numbers really do come from a larger, you know, the season sample size. They have been a lot better as of late. And then going down even further at center, I'm looking at Pierre-Luc Dubois. 
Um, I talked about targeting Columbus tonight, so Dubois is on my radar at his price. I really like it. It's not a buy low by any means, a 5,800 on DraftKings, 5,700 on FanDuel, but the production that he's given us this year, he's got 10 goals, which is the third most of all centers on this slate. And over his last 10 games, he's got 9 points, 24 shots. He's also picking up the blocks here as well. Um, scrolling over and looking at 3.6 blocks per 60. So he's got 15 blocks over his last 10 games, which is nicely, you know, with that production. You know, the points have come here recently. He's got points in four straight games, um, averaging 12.7 DraftKings points over the last 10 games. So he's he's actually just performing a little bit better than his season numbers, and that price is down in a nice mid-range point um, where we can build a really strong, balanced cash game lineup. GPPs definitely don't mind paying up for some of these guys that are in a little bit harder uh, matchups just because they're going to be a little bit lower on, and we know that guys like Seg and Malkin, Eichel, um, even Pedersen, for that matter, are, are elite players and can give us huge upside, two, three-point upside. So moving on to the winger position, <clears throat> uh, I'll give you three here. I like Kucherov, obviously, with point. That's going to be one of my top two-man stacks tonight in cash games. Uh, Panarin, and I do like I do like pairing Panarin on that top line with Ryan Strom. Strom isn't the greatest of cash guys because, as you can see, the shot volume in the course are very, very low but he does pick up the points. Panarin gives you that shot volume. Um, Strom is just a nice value center that you can use as a two-man stack in cash games as well to give you uh, exposure to that Rangers top line, top power play unit against a weak uh, Minnesota Wild defense. Cam Atkinson, I feel like it's a little bit of a buy low on him right now. We have seen him close to the 8K range on DraftKings, close to the 7K range on, or sorry, on FanDuel, close to the 7K range on DraftKings before. He's a high shot volume type guy, 16 and a half course. That's a little bit lower than what he's been running you know, the last couple seasons. Um, but him and Dubois definitely make a, another top two-man stack for me tonight. He's got eight points in his last 10 games, but he's got the shot volumes coming back to the normal 31 shots uh, in those 10 games as well, averaging double-digit uh, fantasy points in that time. Going down a little bit uh, with Kucherov and Point, if you don't really want to trust Point, you know, with his a little bit higher price and his lower shot volume, and you want to just go with the two wingers on that top line for Tampa. I love on on Dredge Palat there. Um, he's been very good lately, and he's been very good on that top line. Seven points and 21 shots in his last 10 games. He gives you a few blocks as well, just under a block per game, uh, right around. Uh, so he's performing about a you know one to one and a half fantasy points per game higher than his season average. So he's going good right now. Comes at a nice mid range, uh, mid 5K price there. On defense, as you can see by all the guys in green here, there is a ton that I'm looking at as core plays tonight. Uh, the defense is a good spot, you know, especially in cash games. I used to be a proponent of going two cheap guys punting to two cheap defensemen. It's not really the case anymore. Uh, scoring has gone up overall in fantasy hockey a little bit, especially, you know, with the power plays, lots of penalties and stuff like that. So I really want a guy that gets a lot of ice time. Um, defensemen give you that. They also give you, you know, most of these guys at the top are going to give you power play time. Um, they're going to give you shot blocks, and that's kind of why one thing that I look at a lot for defensemen is not only time on ice per game, uh, power play time on ice per game, it's a little more on the upside side of things, but then the blocks, combined blocks and shots per game, that's this column T here. Um, so obviously the higher the better. One that stands out right away, Roman Yossi for Nashville. He's getting around 25 minutes per game. He's getting five blocks and shots per game, which is excellent. And he also comes in with some good form here as well. <clears throat> a little bit tougher matchup, but 35 shots, 16 blocks, and 9 points over his last 10 games. 13.7 DraftKings points per game in that time. He's been really good. Truba on FanDuel is way too cheap uh, at 4,300. Um, his price is up there. Obviously, he's the number one D-man in, in New York. He's not getting a lot of that power play stuff. Um, power play points contributing there. He's only got 10 points in 21 games. So the upside is a little bit capped, but he's got a very high floor. As you can see, he's averaging 4.8 blocks and shots per game. So at 4,300, that's that's a almost a lock for me in cash games over there on FanDuel. Victor Hedman on the Tampa Bay narrative. I don't think we need to go there for cash games. If you've got the money, you can definitely go there. I just think going down to Yossi, Truba, <clears throat> even these guys in the mid-5K range, low-5K range, make a lot of sense for cash games. And you can get two of these guys in green um, kind of down in here and build your cash games around that. GPP is definitely be jumping up to Yossi and Hedman. 
even Brent Burns in that six and a half total game uh, going up against LA here. I'm just going to highlight him as a GPP play. But you got like uh, the other one that stands out and will probably be in all of my cash game lineups. You got Nate Schmidt for Vegas. He's only 4,600 on FanDuel. So one thing you'll notice when looking at the sheet as well, if, you, if you've if you noticed, you know, there's some bold in the prices. That's just if I prefer one price over um, another. Um, so Truba is one. And then uh, we've got Nate Schmidt here as well, who I like on both sides, but I really like on FanDuel. So going like a Truba and Nate Schmidt is probably my top defensive pairing for cash games on FanDuel just because of the price differential there. But looking at Schmidt's numbers, he's got six points, so he's not a big upside guy. Eight points, 13 games this season. He was injured early on. He's got combined 48 blocks and shots over his last 10 games. Just <clears throat> a crazy floor, even though it is a tough matchup on the road. So that kind of covers everything. Um, if you want to check out some player stats, do some research while you're in here, definitely head over to the player stats tab. This is just for forwards, defensemen. Uh, you can, if you make your own copy of the sheet by going to um, up to the top to file, make your own copy. You can actually come in and start sorting. So if we wanted to look at the leaders in blocks per game, we go up here and we sort that column. So we've got Roman Polak, Sammy Niku. Those are some smaller sample sizes. We've got Oscar Kleffbaum getting up there. Um, combined shots and blocks, we can go look at that time on ice power play. Just a little bit more research. And then um, you can check out every team's depth chart here. I've got it listed. The ones that are in orange are the ones that I have audited on that current day. And then you can kind of just scroll through, look at the lines. Um, this is obviously your even strength line. This is going to be your power play line. This information, you know, you don't have to come to this tab to look at that information because this all is. I'm going to go back to the winger tab here. Look at Kucherov. So this is the even strength line uh, in this column here. And then in this column here is what power play line they're on. So all teams are going to have four lines, um, even strength, and then two lines power play. Um, so that's just something, you know, kind of a tiebreaker when looking at players. If you see one player that's maybe $500 cheaper and playing on the power play versus a player that maybe has a little bit higher floor, but it's a more expensive, um, not playing any power play time, you might want to lean towards that guy that's going to get the extra ice time. A little bit more upside there. All right, thanks for checking out the video. I'm going to be around in RotoPros community chat. That's a Slack chat channel. If you're not there, make sure to get over to rotopros.com. Um, sign up for your free trial today. Come in, check out what we're all about. In there up until lock, cover an NBA, NHL, and Monday Night Football as well tonight. So jump in, pick our brains, and uh, skeletons will be out about 30 to 40 minutes before uh, lock. Thanks, guys. Good luck.